All right, you guys ready for at least one more, hopefully not too long and boring transfer case video? Um, cool, good. If you're not, <laughs> stop watching now. This is probably gonna be less than 10 minutes. I'm gonna show you how to safety wire the, um, the shift rail to fork retainer bolt that big square headed bolt that you saw me cut the safety wire off if you watch that nightmare of a video i made before um i'm gonna set the camera up in the thing which <laughs> check this out i clamped a little tiny vise to the back of the truck and then clamped a clamp in the vise and then i clamped the phone in another clamp and then it looks down on the transfer case so Ooh, you have a problem solving. So let me clamp you in there. I'm going to show you what to do. Uh, let's see if I can get a good shot. Um, open the clamp. All right. That should give you a decent view of what I'm doing. A little closer would be preferable, but this will work. Uh, did you... Did you the two things we need to do this job are this. This is the uh, stainless 041 stainless steel safety wire that I was talking about. You can get this from Harbor Freight. I think it was less than $10. And then safety wire pliers. Now, these aren't from Harbor Freight. These are actual quality safety wire pliers. Um, but you can get the same thing from Harbor Freight. They come in two sizes. These are the large ones. There's also some smaller ones. Uh, so let's uh, get to it. The way you do safety wire. I'm still moving. I'm still shitting away. Okay. So we know that the old safety wire was wrapped around the shaft there. And it came up to the bolt here. And went through the bolt. Now the hole is in the same spot. Which is, instills a bit of confidence. Because I uh, was... Tightening it down pretty good, and I figured I got it just about as tight as it was to begin with. So you want to pull out a length of safety wire, probably way more than you think you're going to need. Because when you come up short, when you're just about there, it really sucks. So we're going to cut off for that three inches we got to travel. We're going to cut off about a foot. And it's okay to have more than you need. Because um, just like doing wiring, when you come up short, you have to start over. Or, you know, with wiring, I mean, you can splice more on, but it looks like shit. Very unprofessional. So, I'm going to straighten our, out our wire a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bend it back around on itself, end to end. Hold it there. And we're going to kind of make a U out of it. So, that's going to tell us how far we can go. And if you look it down there, it's just a little farther than what we need, which is great. There's no problem with that at all. So now we need to, in order to get it around that shaft, we kind of got to make a hook out of it. So we can finagle it down there around it and come back up. Okay. Now we can reach down there with our safety wire pliers. You could just use needle nose to reach down and grab it, but uh, pull it up. Once again, both of your ends together, okay? Now, uh, what you want to do is pull it together down there as close as you can get your fingers to the shaft. No pun intended. And hold it together and then lay it out to the hole in the bolt, okay? Here's the thing. When you're attaching to a fastener, you need to visualize the way the fastener turns when it's tightening, okay? It turns clockwise in this case. Uh, there are left-hand fasteners, so uh, bear in mind. You always want to come in and go um, to the side, like... Um, keep in mind that you're like you're trying to tie off the side um, that would be spinning away first so if it were to back off this way this side would be going that way first so you want to attach to this side first 
and when you do this you want to clamp your pliers right about there because what we're going to do is we're going to twist the wire up until that and uh, notice how the pliers are angled that's the well I'll, I'll show you in a minute you clamp straight on on the wire just like so hopefully you can see that and then you lock the pliers then you just uh you see that in the frame yeah okay then you pull the handle once and you see our gap down there closed up towards the shaft and then you want to go again and if you look we've got a pretty tight weave there um if you go too much you'll break it off so let's unlock the pliers you do that usually just by squeezing it'll unlock but uh these are kind of rusty so and uh you see, I actually came up just short of where I want it to be. Where you want to be is you want uh, you want the strand to come off of your your, um, your twist and go right into the hole. And I'm about a quarter inch short of that. Now, you really can't um, you can't go and redo that, but you can try to clamp it. So it doesn't twist the rest of it anymore and then you just go a couple of more perfect now what you want is you want one leg to come off over the top and you will feed that through your fastener you feed it through the fastener you want to clamp it and pull it through Fuck, how did it still come up short? Okay, so we gotta do some more twisting. Okay, I don't want the wires to stay together, otherwise, you end up with like a um, undesirable, like bread tie uh, braid, and it's not, it's not. Let's try that. Probably did too much there. Okay. Actually, it's perfect. So what you want when you get it there is you want it to be fairly taut, which it is. Actually, really, wait a minute. Holy shit. The, uh, <laughs> the wire actually moved back away from the the uh, coupler there coupler shift fork it moved back like a three quarters of an inch away from it so this is not right it should have been tied on there let's clamp it down here twist it a little more see if we can get it to tighten up around that shaft so this is not the right way to do this because now you're ending up with more twist down there than you have on the rest and it still ain't tight Now I got too much up here. So guess what we're gonna do now? Yeah, we're gonna cut it off. We're gonna start over. Because you can only work this stuff so much before it gets brittle and it breaks. And uh safety wire can save you, but it can also totally destroy something if the wire breaks and comes off and uh, rattles around, gets in some bearings or other places it shouldn't be. So, uh, safety wire does work harden, just like any other mild steel wire or what have you. So, keep that in mind. It's really... I am just striking out today. Having a hell of a time. So, let's pull another length of wire, and I bet we're back past 10 minutes, ain't we? No, nine minutes and 30 seconds. Sweet. So, cut another length of wire. We're going to make a hook on the end. We'll go down and around. Back up. We're going to grab it with needle nose. We'll come up. Put our ends together. Bring those ends together. So I've 
gotta try to get that tight around that ship shaft. We're gonna go with three poles this time. Okay. Yeah, it's still slid up there, but not. It's got. It is definitely more tight now. You can tell. So, um, and actually, the length is just about right too. That's cool. I like that. So, just like before, we're gonna take this and put it over through the bolt. Pull it through. And slid up the shaft anyway. You bastard. Like farther than it ever did before. What the fuck? Oh, you motherfucker. I know my head's all up in the screen, but you're gonna have to deal with it because I'm about to get mad. Okay. Okay, what the... <clears throat> so for some reason it keeps wanting to slide back down the shaft and like spring out. Um. Oh, shit. I do not want it getting somewhere where it ain't supposed to be. Why are you doing that, you fucking... And it still didn't tighten up down there. Just like, uh... I mean, that's not the way safety wire is supposed to work. There's supposed to be something else solid with a hole in it that you run the freaking wire through. This is stupid. Anyway. Um, I mean, the other one was on there this, kind of the same way. That's just annoying. I don't like that at all. But I guess if it's been together for as long as it has, it's okay. So now we'll come around this side of the fastener. And we'll bring our wires back together. And, uh, then they don't have to be the same length on this side, but you want to clamp your pliers closer to where you intend to terminate it. And make sure the wires stay together so if they separate, you won't get the twist right. You can hold your finger there because that wire is going to want to go that way. So, tighten it. Tighten it again, tighten it again. Okay, so you see what it leaves you there? It leaves you a pigtail. And that is nice and tight. That's the way it's supposed to be. It won't even move. So what you do now is you take these ends, this end here, you snip it off. And then uh, take the pliers and a professional will twist the end back around like so, so that nobody else will get hurt on it, because that leaves a very sharp end. Now, this in here, let's see if I can put a little bit of a twist in it to keep it more snug. Yeah, that should help. Either way, I mean, that bolt's not coming out now. I don't really like how it's supposed to wrap around the shaft like that, but it's, it's the way it was built, so... Anyway, that's how you safe to wire a retainer bolt on a rock pole transfer case on the high-low range shift rail. So, oh, goodness gracious. This transfer case has kicked my ass today. And I haven't even changed the input seal yet. But, uh, oh, goodness. All right. Thank God for soft beds and Bud Light. Um... Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Check out our sponsor in the description below, Big Mike's Motor Pool. You can get all your parts there anytime you need them, and they ship fast and they're great priced. Help support the little guy. Buy your shit from Big Mike's. Tell him I sent you. He might even give you a discount. I don't know. 
we haven't talked about that, but maybe. He's a pretty cool dude. Uh, thanks, dudes. I can never get this damn thing to stop recording when I'm ready to stop.